All right, about 12 hours later, this was dry enough to paint on. Uh, you can kind of see how it darkened up all the white. Uh, it also darkened up the blue and the red. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go do some highlighting and also applying some detail work to this. All right, so the first highlight we're going to do is red. Now I'm going to be using Nepal Crimson, but any crimson, any bright red will do. All right, the brush I elected to use. Now I'm using Master Touch from Fine Art Studio. That's the brushes I've been using. And this is a 2-0 round. I like the round better. I have some spotters, but they don't hold paint very well. They're just for putting dots on figures, which sometimes is good for buttons and things like that. All right, so we're going with crimson and a little bit goes a long way. I look for areas that I think might be too dark or don't fold with the fabric. And then I just give it a line. I leave a gap, give it another line. Now what I'm trying to do, okay, imagine fabric laying on your skin and I'm gonna use my knuckles as an example. So you've got low ground and you've got high ground on your fabric. I'm trying to hit this area here, here, and there, and not, and leaving this the dark red. Uh, if, it's, if it's completely smooth, I will still do areas to give it the illusion that there is folds in the fabric. Uh, unless, unless, of course, I want it to be completely smooth. Some people would say, well, Mr. Everything, you should just dry brush and you'll get the raised areas. Well, that is true, but you don't get the same look that you get when you do uh, precision details, precision highlights. Hi, that's what I meant, highlights. Okay, like that. And also sometimes your dry brush will hit things that you don't want it to hit. Now, I also want to point out that if you see brush stroke streaks, that's okay, because what you're doing is you're creating those imaginary folds anyway. And remember, you don't have to cover every piece of the red because you've already done that with the undercoat. Okay, you see how that brings out, it makes it a lot brighter, but you can also see the dark red underneath. All right, he looks good. Let me go ahead and get the rest of these guys done, and then I'll be right back. Okay, a couple of things that I wanted to point out while I was doing the red. Um, if you have a model and it, 
the detail is enough where you can see the not the laces but the fold in the fabric uh, the stitching that's what I'm looking for if you can see the stitching between two pieces like the sleeve to the torso or maybe some stitching down the back center of the torso you want to be sure to avoid highlighting that because it'll bring leave it dark and let the darkness draw that out from the bright that's around it and the second thing is on these models you'll notice that the forearms are covered with these uh, chevrons and the chevrons are going to be white they're white uh, stitches so I am not highlighting the red under the chevrons because I want it to be darker and more like a shadow the shadow all right when I get these finished I'm almost done I'll be right back to do the next step all right so the next highlight we're gonna do is their trim their facings and I'm using again true blue uh, there is this philosophy in painting that has uh, come into light really recently and it's called the Holy Trinity <laughs> it's basically the trifecta or the, the triple D no it's uh, what it is is three colors of paint in progression getting darker darker and darker right and everything worth painting is worth painting with three colors so you put a base coat on then you put the that's the undercoat then you put the main coat on which is the main color of the item and then you put the highlight coat which is the brighter raised areas okay so let me t now I don't do it that way uh, it <clears throat> but effectively I do get that same type of effect I paint with a base coat, the primary coat, and then I apply the dip. And when I dip it, it automatically brings it down to the base color, right? And then from the base color, I apply the third color, which is the highlight. So effectively, I am getting the Trinity, but I do it, I cheat in the middle step. Basically, I dip speeds everything up in my opinion and the dip not only is polyurethane which protects the model it also does like face washes and it washes it brings out details now this true blue I'm trying not to paint as much as I did when I did the base coat so I'm kind of like doing a middle line and you can see how that wrist cuff is different than his lapel right it's brighter it brings it out and it doesn't look so dirty but again remember these are light troops they're used to being out in the dirt skirmishing in the woods laying prone, all that good stuff. And remember, you're just highlighting, you're not painting. So you're not reinventing the wheel, you're just adding some brightness to the area that you've already painted. All right, so let's, let's go ahead and work with my, my base model here and we'll do just the base model I'll get back to those guys
And I like to focus on a theme, so like I go do the wrists first on both hands. Actually, I'll do the wrists on all the models normally. Okay, he's good. And then I'll do the collars. You can do it in any order, whatever's comfortable for you. I'm just saying I like to do one particle of clothing at a time because it keeps my mind focused on what needs to be painted. And again, remember, we're just highlighting. I'm bringing that blue that got really dark after the wash bringing it up okay so you can kind of compare these two models side by side you got this guy with the lighter blue and then this guy with the darker blue lighter blue darker blue okay so let me go ahead and finish all these models, and then I'll be right back. All right, so now I'm using Delta Creme Coat uh, Antique White for the highlight of the pants. Okay, so this is our guy. basically doing the same thing that we've done because I consider this to be a little bit too dirty uh, it needs to be brought up just a little bit but not a lot that's why I'm using antique white completely covering it but I am and I'm not hitting every fold in the fabric trying to make those wrinkles look as natural as possible. Yeah, that actually looks pretty good. Notice how the pant color has changed, but I still have quite a bit of highlights in that model. Now he's not done, I gotta do his buttocks. back of the knee to give it like a fold. This also, highlighting also gives you that opportunity to correct any clumping that your dip might have done. Dip doesn't listen to you, it does what it wants to do.
once you get underneath the bayon bayonet sheath. the color and that leaves that dark and I'm not going to highlight the leg the leggings because those are the perfect color right now all right let me go ahead and finish up the rest of the pants I'm not also not doing the small clothes because the the vest because it gives a contrast in color there's three colors here this this and that so let me continue on with these guys and then I'll be right back Okay, and since I've got the antique white already out, and I'm going to use that to actually paint the slings, so let's go ahead and do the slings. Okay, the sling, fairly super easy. There's just this little section underneath the musket or rifle. And I really only paint the top portion of it. And I leave the sides brown or black very rarely will I come up and touch the side of the sling for fear of making it not straight okay back side of the sling definitely needs it because there's nothing it's just brown There you go and that's the sling now if it's on a figure kind of like that where he's got the sling in his hand I do the same paint the sling and remember to leave a little space between the sling and the hand so that there'll be an artificial black line and then I also put a little dot on the sling that he's gripping in his hand like that. Being sure to do the front and the back of the sling just in case. Ooh. Must have missed something under here too. You might not be able to see it, but there's like a section of the sling I must have missed on my primary character. Okay, so let me go through and do all the slings, and then I'll be right back. Okay, guys, now for the turnbacks, we're going to use a paint from Folk Art called Vintage White. Uh, it's not as bright as Wicker White. You can kind of see the difference. So it's more like cloth.
And there you go, there's the turnbacks. All right, let me go ahead and do all the turnbacks and then I'll be right back. Yeah, and before I move on, I just want to give you a little historical anecdote. Now, the reason why they call it a turnback is because they take the corners of their jacket and they fold them back or turn them back inside out. So you're actually seeing the inside lining of the jacket uh, on these corners. They have buttons. They fold them back and they button them in place. And that's why they call it a turn back. All right, so the next thing we're going to do this uh, with the vintage white is also paint the chevrons on their sleeves. Now be very careful. This is a very meticulous and very small place on the model to paint. And there are three chevrons on each sleeve. It's a chevron, not just a hash, so I gotta paint the other side as well. Like that. Here we're gonna do it one more time on his other sleeve. It looks like the chevrons are underneath. Again, reaching around the camera. concealed by his body so there we go all right let me do the rest of these and we'll be right back all right now continuing on with the vintage white oh I still have it out I want to hit the epaulets of these models, uh, these troops. Now, these epaulets are not the braided, laced, metallic epaulets that uh, you see on most like Napoleonic soldiers. These were actually cloth epaulets. Uh, I consider them faux epaulets. You gotta get the right consistency of paint. I didn't have the right, I had it too watery. Had to thicken it up just a little bit. And their epaulets are on both sides as far as I can tell. All right, let me do all the epaulets and then we'll be back. All right, so the next one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint all their straps, the cross straps, the straps for their haversack, canteen, and cartridge box. Okay, 
So let's find the strap. Okay, the next color we're going to use is we're going back to licorice uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to use this to correct any overpainting or fix any piece of the model that's supposed to be black with licorice. Like ammo boxes or helmets or anything that's supposed to be black. Oh, like uh, bayonet sheets, things like that. 
there might or might not be anything that needs to be touched up. So I'm just taking a look at all the models, doing a review, okay, like the edge of that. I could have left the brown on there, that would have been good. It would have been like the black dye on the leather had rubbed off. Would have been an interesting look. Okay, where the red spilled over onto the ammo cartridge. Gotta get rid of it. Done. Looking all over the ammo cartridges. Looking all over the helmets. And then looking all over the bayonet scabbards which are underneath the haversacks. Okay, he looks good. Okay, we're gonna check this guy out. Oh, I can see an error on a couple of helmets right here. Right on the top of this brim fixed. Right on the Side there. Looks like this brim here. Helmet's good. Red on the ammo cartridge box. Oh, there's a lot of red on this one. All right, let me touch up all the black and then I'll be right back. Okay, now the next color I'm using is Antique Gold. And uh, the Antique Gold is going to go on the brim around the Tarleton. And I want to put it on very lightly. I don't want to put a heavy coat. just to get the impression that it's got gold around there. Alright, and the next color we're using for the barrels is natural steel. And I'll also use that for the tips of their scabbards. Okay, this is our model. I look along the top. I'm using the side of my brush. And I'm just doing the top of the musket. Just the top. All right, when I get all the muskets done, I'll be right back. All right, now we're gonna go back to Imperial Red for these two liters sashes. Now I only put a very light drop in there because there's only two models and there's very little of the sash showing. So here we go, we got this little guy right here. Okay, and then across the waist. Got to locate it.
Okay, I'm using pure gold, but you could use brass in this case if you want. Um, I just find that pure gold pops a little bit stronger on the model. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit his firing mechanism. With some, with some pure gold. And that's it. And then the only difference is on the leaders, I'm also going to hit their epaulets. Depending on the rank, you could use different color on the sash. You can use a different color, silver or gold, on the leader's epaulets. I think you can actually get away with just using white epaulets on this unit because of the cloth epaulets. On the privates. Continue on with the firing mechanisms, and then I'll be right back. Now, on the rifles that you can actually get to their buttstock, be sure to put a, cover the buttstock with brass or gold. All right, now the next color you're gonna to wanna to use is charcoal or German gray. I'm, I'm using chemical char charcoal, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that on the horsehair of the Tarleton helmet very sparingly. What we're gonna do is not dry brush it, but almost kinda of like dry brush it. and then you'll get an effect like that. Yeah, when we're done, I'll do a close-up of every one of these models. Alright, I want to get all these horsehairs done. I'll be back. 